Yo, what's up guys, ladies, gentlemen, everyone tuning into this video. Welcome to my quick overview of my week one progress on my Val Animate Weapon Guardian Summoner. Quick disclaimer before we start anything, this is not a build guide. This league I've decided to prioritize content over gaming, so I'm a content creator foremost and a gamer second. I've barely played for a streamer, I, I, I don't know how much, but like on average probably like six hours per day only, and this build is poorly min-maxed for softcore trade because I am playing in softcore trade but I'm essentially playing solo cell phone. I haven't had any big drops. I do buy some things but everything in the build is very affordable and probably all in all only like 40 chaos. So keep that in mind. This is not like a high-end showcase. This is just like what you can realistically achieve and I think because a lot of my followers are not high-end gamers themselves this is a little bit more relatable than the top-end content that a lot of other people make no hate to those that's the content that is also important like people need something to look up to but this is just a showcase so you can see that with little investment in terms of time and currency you can make a very functional build that can clear red maps just fine now, I've just hit level 90 and I'm going to quickly go over why I played this build and the decisions that I made. And then I'll tell you all about the skills that I'm using, why I picked the ascendancy, how I designed the tree. And then we'll go a little bit over the gear before we close out the video. I will weave in scenes of gameplay here and there. And in the beginning, if everything went correct, you already saw a little bit of a showcase of how the build clears. Now, why would you go with Animate Weapon over SRS? SRS Poison is one of the top tier meta builds and it's really expensive. It's also deservedly expensive. It's really good. But I just wanted to do Animate Weapon because Animate Weapon was always one of my favorite skills. I played uh, Animate Weapon back in the day before it had any quality of life when it was stupidly OP just based on the fact that it was super clunky to play because you had to summon weapons off the ground. There were no lingering blades. I'll go into that in a second, what lingering blades are in case you're not familiar. But Animate Weapon has received a lot of quality of life upgrades over the years, regardless of whether it had them or not i always had a special place in my heart for this build because it's just really cool flavor to summon weapons from the ground into the fight and let them fight for you now also another reason is that this league grinding your games added val animate weapon a val version of animate weapon that summons an additional in my case 11 but i think per default it's like 10 or a little bit lower it depends on the level additional weapons on top of your limit for the regular animate weapon and turns them into uniques which is really cool so what i did in order to make this build i didn't want to do what everyone else is doing hence no ss and i also wanted to you know do guardian over necro because i just was like my well, guardian might be a little bit more fun for me personally since i'm playing in softcore trade because i have a guild now a lot of guild members i thought it would be great to have a guardian because he's a little bit of a better addition to a party than a necro is so what I did is I looked up Necromancer animate weapon builds from last league on PoE Ninja, made sure that I only looked at the build state in week one, and then adapted that concept for myself, threw some things out, added some other things, and this is where we are. Now, the main bread and butter skill in this build is animate weapon. Once again, this summons weapon off of the ground, either items that are identified or lingering blades that can be left by bladefall or ethereal knives bladefall is probably the best skill for this they also changed it so you cannot animate weapons with six sockets at all anymore so you're not ruining your jeweler income there's a number of ways that you can scale this build because it's physical damage you could convert the physical damage from the animated weapons into either fire cold or lightning with triad grip or you could build a poison build similar to the poison sos build or in my case i decided to go full physical we'll go over that a little bit later in the section where i go over all the links in order to supply lingering blades we got bladefall then we're also running zombies which I summon on my alt bar. We also have a carrying golem. The zombies of the carrying golem are just there to provide buffs and a little bit of a meat shield, you know, something for the enemies to hit on so that they're not picking on me. I'm running a determination aura for physical mitigation for my character and the minions. Tempest shield for spell block for my character as well as shock immunity. And I'm running 
right to make nearby enemies take more physical damage the longer they stay in my aura. I'm running a haste on a divine blessing, which gives me a situational speed buff for both my character and the minions. And for mobility, we got a shield charge as well as a flame dash. Currently, I don't have Convocation in the build, which makes it a little bit difficult to focus specific targets. But again, we just hit level 90, so it was fine just blasting through maps. And I will sooner or later probably include one in one of the future upgrades. Now, why did I decide to go Guardian over Necromancer? Simple, if you're playing in Trade League, you probably want to play Necromancer because it is overall the stronger ascendancy for offense with minions. I decided to do Guardian because I like to be a special snowflake, but also because Guardian out of the box, if you're SSF or something like that, gets a lot more speed. So it's a lot easier to feel good seeing that you get Radiant Crusade, which gives Onslaught more damage, as well as Unwavering Crusade for another 20% attack cast movement speed and uh, Intimidate, Unnerf and AoE on the allies. And of course we get Time of Need, which reduces the effect of curses on you and can stack additively with other reductions to curse effect. And every four seconds it regenerates a huge chunk of your life. And for the last ascendancy, we went with Bastion of Hope, which gives you a big chunk of attack block for two out of five seconds. So basically 40% of the time that's up. And it also gives nearby allies attack block and spell block if you've used attacks or spells recently and blocking a single hit means that you and nearby allies cannot be stunned so like out of the box if you don't have access to trade or you don't want to trade a lot this is a lot of quality of life on an ascendancy which is really good to start with and i was well it was pretty good but Necromancer is just fine as well. And in Trade League, you can easily make up for the things that Necro doesn't provide. And overall, I believe Necro is very strong for offense, probably way better than Guardian. I haven't calculated it, but that's how it is. Now, current state at level 90 pre-cluster jewels is like this. Now, you probably instantly notice that we're having a little bit of a loop here. This is because I just closed this. We're going to refund out of the start that we went out of, but starting the build out, I went out here, path around here, and went directly to Righteous Army and Redemption. And because I was still doing damage myself, I also used Spiritual Aid, so we could use that minion damage scaling in our own favor. And then picked up some Reservation, walked through Witch, got minion damage here, minion damage there, and during one kind of important for the duration, yeah, went over here, got Ravenous Horde, and all the way to Written in Blood, picked up Melding, for some extra mana, obviously get all the reservation clusters and very important, we get Eldritch Battery. Now this league, monsters deal a lot of damage, especially the fully charged crucibles. So we definitely needed the defensive cluster Indomitable Army to give the minions some much needed physical damage reduction. And we also had to make sure that the minions are capped for elemental resist, which is not as hard as it sounds because minions, unlike your character, don't get a reduction to their elemental resistances from killing Kitava. You just have to get them to 75 and they also get some base resistance. Now it's also good, just like with your character, to get a little bit above cap, just in case they get cursed or applied exposure or some other means of resist reduction. But generally speaking, just wanna get some resist so they don't instantly die to elemental damage. Now, like I said, the plan is to refund these points and then go into the cluster jewel socket here, put in a cluster jewel and get more damage there. But so far, this is the build as we're working with it. Oh, I also went over here, got grave pack, got a sanctuary for the block, elemental resist, and a little bit of life and cost reduction, which is really good because it makes the divine blessing haste a little bit more affordable. You can see that when I use this, I'm almost completely out of mana, but the energy shield recharge kicks in really quickly. Now again, for the gear, we're super budget. I'm actually running a five link still. This I bought for like five chaos early on while leveling, just so I have a five link. Then I believe this helmet was probably something like 10 to 20 chaos. I'm not sure anymore. It didn't have the enchant. It didn't have the energy shield recharge rate from Edo of Worlds, which obviously is really handy for Eldritch Battery, but you know, it does its job. Most important, plus level of minion gems. This is a theme that you will see all over the gear because plus gems is incredibly important. Like I said, minion survivability is one of the biggest problems. The damage is fine, but if your minions all die and you get wiped, it's very, very 
unsatisfying and frustrating. So you want to make sure that you have that survivability and giving your minion gems levels means that the base health of the minions that you spawn is much higher and base health means that any percentage region is better, that they have a higher amount of leech that they can leech back over time. And of course, the minions recover 5% of life on minion death is also better if there's higher life than the 5% obviously is more. So we got two minion skill gems on the helmet, little bit of life, large amount of intelligence. Also really not to be undervalued, tier one life regeneration here on the helmet. I got a wand that has plus one all minion skill gems, a little bit of minion and attack speed. And most importantly, we get trigger so we can trigger our skills. For the crucible tree, I only got additional lightning damage and chance to shock. I'm not really super happy with anything here. So likely not going to invest time into unlocking this. Maybe later if I need 30 Val Orbs, probably not. We're just going to get a new better wand because you can get another level if you get plus one all spell skill gems. And then of course you can get a large amount of minion damage, which this wand doesn't have any of this, but it was cheap, I believe around five chaos. Now this shield was relatively expensive. I'm not sure what I bought it for, probably also around 10, 20 chaos, maybe a little bit more than 20. It is really nice though, because plus one minion gems, 15 all risk for me, and then minions have 10% physical damage reduction and 29 all risk, which makes it really easy to cap them out. And on the tree, I didn't get very lucky. These two nodes are relatively useless. I mean, it's a 10% net resist gain, but most importantly, this is 100% chance to avoid being poisoned at the cost of increasing bleed duration on my character by 50%. Now, technically, that means that you take 50% more damage from any bleed, but it's not problematic at all because you want to remove bleeds as soon as you're afflicted with them anyway. And usually when you have a bleed on you, even if you don't increase the duration, you kind of die to the bleed before it's over. So we're working on bleed immunity, gonna fit that in relatively soon, hopefully. But uh, until then, just gotta make sure that instantly when I get a bleed, I need to remove it with the flask. And we're immune to poison, which is pretty, pretty good. Now on the gloves, this I believe I bought for around 10, 12 chaos, a little bit expensive, but nice high amount of life and decent chaos resist roll. And it had an open prefix so I could craft minion damage from the bench. These boots I actually found. The implicits are useless. The enchant I got in Uberlab, 10% movement speed if you haven't been hit recently. Now, sadly, I don't have a lot of evasion. I get hit a lot when I'm in combat, but increased movement speed if you haven't been hit recently is always active when you're in hideout or in town. So it allows me to zoom around a little bit quicker, which is really important for a league start character. You know it, you want to, you know, move quickly to your crafting bench, to the trades, to your stash. You know, as you can see, really cheap boots. If you had to buy them, they wouldn't cost a lot. The belt, filler as well got just life, a little bit of resist, crafted mana because I didn't know what else to craft and I couldn't really stand the empty prefix. And then on the rings, we're just using amethyst rings with tier one life rolls and some decent resists. The amulet is the biggest filler of them all and got a little bit of attributes and most notably 17% cast speed. Every time that you start a map on this build, you need to bring up your maximum weapons first. So what you do is you summon Bladefall and you summon up to 16 weapons. And that can be very, very tedious, which is why I value the cast speed on the amulet. Probably going to hope for some cast speed on the wand in the long run as well. And I value the onslaught from Radiant Crusade, which means that while there is at least five nearby allies, which is always you and nearby allies have onslaught. The animated weapons, I currently have linked to Brutality, to melee physical damage, to minion speed and to melee splash for the clear. The melee splash can be switched out for single target, you can put something else in there. For example, Ruthless would be a great replacement for single target damage. We could also, if you somehow are sure that they're always on full life, use damage on full life support. Or if you don't go with brutality, which excludes the minions from dealing chaos and elemental damage, you could use added fire or something like that. My zombies are linked to feeding frenzy, meat shield and maim. Maim is only there to apply the maim debuff to enemies. So they take 10% increased physical damage 
from all sources and Feeding Frenzy and Meat Shield do cancel each other out in terms of behavior. It says minions from supported skills are defensive on Meat Shield and it says minions from supported skills are aggressive on Feeding Frenzy. So they have neutral behavior now, but the other stats still apply. So whenever they hit, they have a chance to grant Feeding Frenzy to you, which is a buff that grants 10% more minion damage, 10% increased minion movement speed, and 10% increased minion attack and cast speed globally to everything on my character. And Meat Shield gives them a chance to taunt on hit. What's really important to know about taunt is that there's always only one source of taunt. So like an enemy can only be taunted by one of my minions or generally speaking by one thing at a time, by one unit, and taunted enemies deal 10% less damage to everything that is not the source of the taunt, which means this increases my survivability as well as my other minions' survivability drastically. To summon a large amount of Lingering Blades, I'm using a level 1 Bladefall, level 1 because it has low mana cost and it doesn't have any benefit if you get a higher level, and then Spell Cascade to repeat it in front of it and behind it. As you can see, Bladefall says five volleys and leaves a lingering blade in the ground for every volley. So one cast would be five, but with Spell Cascade, you get 15 blades, which is almost enough to get all my weapons up in one cast of Bladefall. So throw this out and then summon all the minions or have to cast a second time. I mean, now, now I'm zoomed in, so I didn't, didn't see these ones. But you get the gist. I'm linking faster casting because I want to zoom through maps and have that quality of life of faster casting. But obviously you could take out the faster casting if you're willing to cast a little bit slower. And then this is the spot where the convocation would go. I think convocation isn't really that necessary early on. It's really handy later if you're trying to do incursions and you want to focus down the architects or if you're trying to do legion and you want to focus down the generals or other value monsters or you blight and you want to focus the bosses and all. But until then, if you're just doing general mapping and getting your map progression don't really need convocation all that much and faster casting is something that i prefer generally lacking sockets so you can't have everything that you want in my trigger wand i'm using desecrate and bone offering for the defensive buff this allows the minions to recover four percent of their life in fact regenerate four percent of their life per second if they have blocked recently as well as a decent amount of block chance and spell block so they don't instantly die when they start getting hit by enemies especially from the super rippy crucible monsters Last but not least, we got Vulnerability in this wand. I didn't mention Vulnerability. It is a curse that makes enemies take increased physical damage, and it also gives attack hits against cursed enemies a 25% chance to inflict bleeding, which means I could also use Bloodlust on the animated weapon, for example. We got Tempest Shield in the loose socket here. If I get a six link, then probably gonna have to put the Tempest Shield here. So still no place for Convocation. Might have to get an Unset Ring. And then in the loose sockets here, we get Haste with the Divine Blessing. Divine Blessing makes it so the aura is not a permanent reservation, but it's a one-time cast for a very high cost. Got the Determination here and a loose Flame Dash here in the socket. I like to Shield Charge around, but Flame Dash is just nice to have when you want to get over ledges. Flame Dash is also instant when you haven't cast it in a while and only has a uh, animation at the end of it, but the, the movement portion is instant. So as you click it, you're directly out, which is really good for repositioning. Whereas Shield Charge has a little bit of an attack animation in the beginning, right? Flame Dash is instant. Shield Charge doesn't doesn't instantly get you out. Shield Charge with faster attacks here and a loose pride. This is not supported by anything as well as my Carrying Golem. In the build that I was following, the Carrying Golem was on Feeding Frenzy together with the zombies, but my zombies needed a little bit more survivability, so I decided to sacrifice a four link for the zombies, and the Carrying Golem doesn't really take a lot of time to resummon. The zombies, if they get wiped, it's a pain in the ass to resummon because they need corpses and all that. Carrying Golem, I just have on my right click and I press it all the time, and it's basically never down because I subconsciously press the right button all the time. So as you can see, really, really budget setup. We're going to get into the path of building, which I'm also going to share in the description below, just so you can copy this. We got a mediocre amount of armor, 10,000 armor in fact, with the armor flask actually almost 20k. I could throw a molten shell in once I free up some sockets. Resists are basically overcapped for early weakness. I got positive chaos resist, 
Then we get a 30% chance to block attack damage from the shield, which in two out of five seconds due to Bastion of Hope gets capped up to 75 and 29% spell block. Now in the path of building, what I didn't mention, if you level this, you can actually level as a fire caster, right? You just omit the notes here and you go this way and you pick up the fire notes here, you get spiritual aid so you can get the minion damage here. And then you just branch over to the tree I did my transition to animate weapon, I believe, somewhere in the second half of the game, like after Act 7, after Act 8. I think I had uh, I, th I had Cruel Lab at the time, so I had Radiant Crusade and Unwavering Crusade, and then I decided, yo, let's go animate weapon. I bought a Val animate weapon gem and had started leveling it already, so it wasn't too much below. As I said, minion level super crucial for the survivability of the minions and survivability is nowadays and specifically in this league one of the most important stats. And then you can see my configuration it looks like this. Animating lingering blades, meat shield enemy near you, feeding frenzy active, 23 non-golem minions nearby, that is 16 animated weapons and 7 zombies. Pride aura effect is on max. Onslaught because perma onslaught. For the minions as well. Cast the spell, use the minion skill recently. Enemies are maimed, intimidated, and unnerved. Total DPS between 16 animated weapons and 7 raised zombies and a carrying golem of 737,000. So that's not even a million, but decently above half a million. And as you can see from the footage, we are able to kill things just fine. Of course, it could always be better, but keep in mind this is a super budget solution, and I quickly wanted to get my first video of this build out before I transition this into a stronger version of the build. My immediate plan, like I said, is to get the cluster jewel here, put in a 12 node minion cluster jewel with some notables, refund out of this stuff, spec into there. The minion accuracy is not a problem yet. As you can see, the minions have 3000 accuracy and above, so they have more than 95% chance to hit against most enemies. And I'm super happy with the build. If you were thinking you need a lot of money to get started on a minion setup, that's absolutely not the case. This is a lot of fun to play. I've had a blast so far and it does really well against blighted maps in particular and also deals reasonably well with the Crucible. The biggest problems I've encountered so far are Legion because the minions are just really not able to focus fire on the important monsters, but it's relatively hard to free a lot of value monsters in a legion. But everything that has single target and where there's not a lot of distraction for the minions, such as Betrayal or Metamorph or Essences or the big tanky Crucible guys, it's all pretty doable. Oh yeah, one quick thing I didn't mention is this jewel here, which has 23% reduced effect of curses on you with life and mana. And obviously the 20 plus reduced effect of curses on you means that I'm curse immune because Guardian has also 80% reduced effect of curses on you on time of need. So that's it for this video. Just wanted to give you a quick overview of what I'm playing. Subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss the next update in the week two video when we hopefully have the build transitioned to do a lot more damage. And if you want to monetarily support the creation of my content, as well as the creation of the Faded Connections Path of Exile community podcast, you can of course purchase a subscription on Twitch, purchase a YouTube membership, or you can pledge to my Patreon. I do thank all of my supporters. You guys are awesome and I couldn't be doing it without you. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.